Hello, my name is Kerry Bennett. I'm uh, Max's favorite uncle. Uh, the program doesn't say that, but we'll change that later. So. Max and Lauren have asked me to welcome you. Uh, thank you for coming on this spectacular day. They truly appreciate you coming from near and far to participate and enjoy today with them. Uh, Max and Lauren came together with love and love is what brings us all here together today. So again, thank you very much for them for coming and welcome.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Father. On behalf of Max and Lauren, I'd like to welcome you, some of you to Indianapolis, some of you to this Church of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, but indeed all of you to a celebration. G.K. Chesterton said once, whenever we come to church, we should realize that we are in a special place because God is there. God's in all the places, all the dimensions of our lives, but is present in a special way as we celebrate the gift of their love. Before we continue, let's just take a moment out from the busyness, the preoccupations of this day, in the quiet of who we are. Remember that God is with us. Max and Lauren, this is the hour you give your love to one another. As we surround you at this altar of God, we will see you and hear you state your intentions about the kind of love that you believe in. First of all, you believe in a love that is freely given, just as God freely gave to the both of you at the time of your birth and your baptism. So what you do this day is that you give your love freely to one another. And it is the prayer of all of us as your family, your friends, your church, that you give that love freely each day and that you make your home a heaven and one day heaven your home. And let us pray. Gracious God, you have made the bond of marriage a holy mystery, a symbol of your love for all of us. Hear our prayers this day for Max and Lauren with faith in you and in each other. They pledge their love. May their lives always bear witness to the reality of that love. We ask this as we do all things through Christ the Lord. Amen. Let's be seated now and listen as God speaks through our readings. reading from the book of Ruth. Ruth said to Naomi, entreat me not to leave you and to turn back from following you. Wherever you go, there I will go. Wherever you stay, there I will stay. Your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
This is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so much you also do. And over all these, put on love. That is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in the wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs, with gratitude in your heart to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. May the Lord be with you. With your spirit. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him, and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and who thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven will be great. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Over 200 years ago, there lived a famous Jewish philosopher. His name was Moses Mendelssohn. Moses Mendelssohn was renowned for his wisdom and his insight. But Moses Mendelssohn did have one problem. He was very short and he had a severe hunchback. And he also had a secret. Moses Mendelssohn was in love with a beautiful German girl by the name of Gretchen. But he could never speak that love because he was afraid of being rejected. One day, Gretchen came to visit Moses for spiritual insight. And she asked him this question. Do you believe that marriages are made in heaven? And Moses replied, I most certainly do. And let me tell you a story. Once there was a little boy in heaven, and he was talking to his angel. And the angel said to the little boy, I and God have prepared for you a beautiful, beautiful bride. You are going to be so happy with this woman. 
And then the angel paused. The little boy said, what's the problem? Why are you pausing? And the angel said, well, there will be a difficulty. This beautiful girl will be born with a hunchback. And the little boy said, oh, please, please do not let that happen. Instead, give that hunchback to me. The angel relented. Moses concluded the story by saying, I am the little boy in the story, and you are the little girl. Immediately then, Gretchen fell in love with Moses Mendelssohn, and they lived happily ever after for many years. That's actually a true story. All of us here today, at least in some way, even an old guy like me, are aware that there is no such thing as perfectly ever after. But we also know deep in our hearts that there is a happily ever after. And how does that come? It comes because two people gather together and make a promise, as Max and Lauren do this afternoon. They promise to run, to walk, to amble, to crawl through life together for the rest of their lives. They promise to be there with and for each other through everything that life will throw their way. They promise to be there for each other on the streets of Indianapolis and the hills of Gatlinburg. They promise to be there through the ups and the downs of the stock market, speech therapy, entrepreneurship, and real estate. They promise to be there for each other on that day when the Cubs once again win the World Series, the Colts win the Super Bowl, and yet another banner flies in Assembly Hall. They promise to be there and always work to build each other up and not to tear each other down. They promise to listen with intensity, to speak with thoughtfulness, and to confront with fairness. They promise not to let the pettiness of life chip away at the love that they celebrate this day. They promise that they will cherish their families of origin and yet at the same time work to build and create a new family. They promise not to let the daily idiosyncrasies and irritations that are a part of all of our world chip away at the love that they celebrate this day. They promise that they will see in sexuality an expression of the gentleness and passion of God's love for all of us. And so today, we celebrate what Max and Lauren will do for each other and also what they will do for us. Because a fundamental truth of our faith is this. Because they love each other, we are better people. Our world is a better place. They model for us what and who our world can become. It's a story told about two men who were talking about their marriage. And the first man said, well, I've discovered that if I take time to be with my life, that if I'm really attentive to her and thoughtful to her, that our relationship takes on a whole new world. It becomes much richer and fuller. And the second man says, well, maybe I should give that a try. So that night he goes home and he says to his wife, dear, it's so wonderful to see you. I appreciate all that you do for our family each day, all the sacrifices that you made. And you look this evening so very beautiful. I want to take you out for a magnificent dinner. And then after dinner, let's go for a walk in the park and truly reconnect. And the wife begins to cry. And she says, this has been a terrible day. The dishwasher broke. Johnny broke his arm on the playground. Janie was called into the principal's office. And now you come home drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that story for two reasons. First of all, it's a reminder that we all need to be intentional about enriching our relationships. 
it does involve work. It does involve a certain discipline. And it also involves a certain humor. We need to laugh at ourselves, our foibles, our idiosyncrasies, and yes, even our struggles. It strikes me as significant that Max and Lauren had their first official date at Orchard School. They went to see a play called Guys and Dolls. And if I might say this, I believe this is appropriate to say, Lauren looks like a real doll here today. And I'd also like to say that Max looks like one really happy guy. And I hope that that happiness, I know that that happiness will persist because I believe that they will continue to work at enriching and deepening their love. One of the things that Max did when he proposed to Lauren was this. He created a, a little uh, booklet. And in this booklet, he collected all kinds of things from their history. And at the very conclusion of this scrapbook, there was a picture of someone proposing a ring. And he got down on his knee and proposed to Lauren. And just this morning, one of the things that Lauren did was she gave to Max letters, notes that she had written to him almost every day since the beginning of their relationship. That's the kind of intentionality, that's the kind of thoughtfulness that is an essential dimension of growing in marriage. We're happy that they will continue to do that. We know that they will continue to do that. One of my favorite plays is entitled My Fair Lady. And if you remember, it's the story of Liza Doolittle, who, in a wager, is designed to speak the Queen's or the King's English. And the course of this, she falls in love with her teacher, the professor. And the professor, even though he's very bright up here, is not so bright down here. And towards the conclusion of the play, Liza Doolittle says to the professor, words, 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 I'm sick of words, I want you to love me now. Well, we know something here today. That what Lauren and Max will say to each other in a minute or so isn't just words, words, words. It's a commitment on this day and the rest of their life to love and cherish each other. And for that, all of us are grateful. Max and Lauren, you have come together in this church so that the Lord may seal and strengthen your love in the presence of this church's minister in this community. Christ abundantly blesses your love. He has already consecrated you in baptism and now enriches and strengthens you by a special sacrament so that you may assume the duties of marriage in mutual and lasting fidelity. So in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Max and Lauren, have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? We love each other and honor each other as husband and wife for the rest of your lives. We accept children lovingly from God and bring them up to know God's love. And so, since it is your intention to enter into marriage, join your right hands and declare your consent before us all. I Max take you on to be my wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. I promise to be good to you in good times and bad. True to you in good times and bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you. I will love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Lauren, take you, Max, to be my husband. I, Lauren, take you, Max, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you. To love you and honor you. All the days of my life all the days of my life. You have just declared your consent before Saul. May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your consent and fill you both with his blessings. Okay. 
Lord, bless and consecrate Max and Lorne in their love for each other. May these rings be a symbol of true faith in each other and always remind them of their love. Lauren, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Lauren, take this ring as a symbol of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Max, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Max, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Great. Okay. Good. You guys go back. You guys go back. You guys Let's now stand and share with God from our need in the prayer of the faithful. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, may our church leaders be a testament to Jesus' love, faith, and humility. May our faith in the love God has for us be evident in our love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we are blessed today to be gathered together for a happy occasion. Let us give thanks for our own blessings for the gifts of life and health, which we so often take for granted. We pray for all those who are suffering due to illness, loneliness, injustice, or poverty at this time. We also remember those who care for them, that God will provide hope and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the gift of friendship. We pray for the parents and the families and the friends gathered here who have come from near and far. And thanksgiving for the help, support, and encouragement that they all have provided. May our Lord reward them for their goodness and kindness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all married couples here today be reminded of the joy of their own wedding day. And may the sacrament that we have witnessed here today provide a reminder and renewal of their own vows. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this special day, we ask that you bless both Max and Lauren in their married life together. May they rejoice with one another in moments of strength. In moments of uncertainty and trial, may they be kind and compassionate and patient. May their marriage be a source of personal growth as well as support. And let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Finally, we remember those who cannot be with us, in particular Lauren's mom, Pam. Her smiles and love and laughter are present here on this day, even though she is with us in spirit. We remember all those who have gone before us and we celebrate the joy and love they have brought to our lives. Lord, bless them and keep them in your care until one day we are reunited in the joys of our eternal home. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we do know you hear our prayer. And so we come here and we speak to you. We pray you grant these needs that they be for our good. Has this day as always through Christ the Lord. Amen. As we come together today, there certainly might be things that divide us, differences of politics, faith traditions, favorite sports teams. But we come together, most importantly, conscious of our love for Max and Lauren and conscious that all of us share a common father. Let's not pray to that common father and use the words of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Free us, Lord, from all that is evil. Grant us peace in our time. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from worry as we wait in joyful hope for the coming again of our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your disciples, you say to us, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our faults, but on our faith. Grant us the peace and unity of the kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's share with each other now a sign of peace. We now ask God's final blessing, and as we do so, I invite all of you to extend both of your hands as together I pray a blessing in all of our names. God, the Eternal Father, keep you in love with each other, so that the peace of Christ might stay with you and be always in your home. May your children bless you, your friends console you, and all people live in peace with you. May you always bear witness to the love of God in this world, so that the afflicted and needy will find in you generous friends and welcome you into the joys of heaven. 
And may the Lord Jesus, who was a guest at the wedding in Cana, bless you and your family and your friends. And may the Lord Jesus, who loved the church to the end, always fill your hearts with his love. And may Almighty God bless you both this day and always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let's go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm pleased to introduce you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Max Idlejord. Thank <laughs> you.